Hi, I'm Roy Ball from the Capricorn Cougars. This is the Hyundai Queensland State League. Welcome to the Hyundai Queensland State League Highlight Show. Brought to you by Hyundai, Red Rooster and Football Queensland. And our weekend round 21 match highlights come to you from Stockland Park on the Sunshine Coast. Where third place Sunshine Coast Fire played second place Olympic FC. Contrasting form for the two sides leading into the match with Sunshine Coast undefeated in 11 matches, whilst Olympic FC were coming off a home loss last weekend, which had opened up the chance for the chasing Brisbane strikers to overhaul them in the race for the 2009 title. The referee for the match was Jared Gillett, and he got proceedings underway on a warm afternoon, both sides with plenty to play for. Early play favoured the home side, and Matt Ham in the Olympic goal was certainly the busiest of the two keepers. Sunshine Coast got in behind the Olympic defence and Greg Hensley laid on a perfect cross for Jai Cross. Brilliant save by Ham and Sam Knight's follow-up header was also kept out by the Olympic keeper. An injury to Olympics captain Chris Hagel saw them a player short as Sunshine Coast attacked. A crossfield pass by Chris Davies found Jai Cross who got between Nick Hume and Ham and side-footed home the first goal. Good control and determination by Cross, and a clinical finish to please the home crowd. Brad Lacey and Shane Coffey combined well to allow Coffey a side on goal, but his shot was well saved by Anthony Hall. Tyson Holmes has been in great form recently, and here he was allowed to run at the retreating Olympic defence. His finish was not on target this time. In the 29th minute, a clearance found Jai Cross, who won the ball on halfway. He attacked the retreating defence, beat Sean Robinson on the outside, and then struck a well-timed left foot shot past Ham. Superb individual work by Cross. Delight for his teammates as Fire go two up. Olympic had their moments. Jack Petrie and Chris Hale combined to set up Andrew Orr. His shot though was straight at Hall, who did well low down to his right. Cross was in everything for the home side. His cross from the right was perfect for Sean Blackman. But Ham's save was brilliant, and he also recovered to keep out Tyson Holmes. Hyuk Su Sio and Chris Hagel then combined to get a good ball into Shane Coffey, whose header was held by Hall. As the half drew to a close, Blackman fired well over. Half time whistle saw the home side head to the dressing rooms in front, 2 0. Olympic made two substitutions at half-time and also some positional changes. Immediately they paid dividends. Jack Petrie and Alex Panic set up Brad Lacey down the right. His cross was inch perfect for Coffey to head home. Panic's pass, Lacey's cross giving Coffey a clear header, which he took well. Great work by Holmes and Blackman caused Olympic to scramble and concede a corner. Davies' glancing header caused no problems for Matt Ham. Jack Petrie was working hard and his incisive pass set Coffey loose. He didn't quite get control of the ball and Hall was able to parry the shot. Substitute Zubi Okafor almost had an immediate impact, but just unable to get the ball over the keeper. Sunny Coast also kept driving forward. Here their sub Craig Hawkins unable to get any real power into his shot. In the 31st minute, Hawkins and Holmes played a 1-2 on the edge of the penalty area, and Holmes was tackled by Shane Robinson. 
Referee Gillett in no doubt and awarded a penalty. Chris Davies struck it well. 3-1 to the fire. Firmly and confidently hit by Davies. With time running out, an Olympic corner was headed onto the bar by the defence. Olympic were forced to throw everything at the fire in their search for a goal. Some desperate and committed defending, though, held them out. CO was forced to shoot from long range. Minutes later, referee Gillett's whistle signalled the end of an exciting match, with Sunshine Coast the winners, three goals to one. And afterwards, we spoke to both coaches to get their views. Obviously very happy to, to win the game 3-1. I mean, Olympic and Strikers has been the top two teams all season and that's just done the double over Olympic now. So <clears throat> obviously very happy, very satisfied. It's 11 games, 10 wins and a, and a draw. So um, you know, we're very happy with the form of the team. I think the, the boys are, are confident at the moment. They're, they're fit, strong, confident. They're playing at the top of their game and, and we're, we're looking forward to the, the playoffs. I was a little bit disappointed uh, being 2-0 down at half-time. Uh, I thought we conceded a couple of soft goals, um, but that's just the way it's been going for us lately. Uh, we have to work a little bit harder to turn, turn it around for us going into finals football now. And to all the round 21 results. And as you just saw, a 3-1 victory to Sunshine Coast FC over Olympic FC. That win meant Sunshine Coast go 12 games unbeaten and denied Olympic a chance at winning the title this year. Sunshine Coast scored twice in the first half through two superb goals by Joe Cross. Olympic coach Bobby Hamilton made some changes at half-time, making substitutions and pushing Hyuk Susio into his more comfortable midfield role. The changes seemed to work and Shane Coffey scored for Olympic just three minutes into the second half. But Sunshine Coast were firm in defence and scored their third through a well-taken penalty from Chris Davies after Tyson Holmes was fouled in the area. Logan United will need a minor miracle if they want to reach the final series in 2009 after drawing one all with Wood Sunday Miners at home. Reggie Devaney looked to put the home side on their way in the 16th minute when he hit the back of the net with an impressive free kick. But a late leveller from Michael Van Mullenbrook ensured that the Miners would travel back to Mackay with a share of the points. Bundaberg Spirit's hopes of finding a win in the 2009 season look to be fading after a 6-1 defeat at the hands of Capricorn Cougars. Cougars opened the scoring in the 22nd minute through Gerard Brown and extended their lead with goals from Jonathan Sawyer and Jesse Thompson to secure a 3-0 lead at half-time. Another three goals in the second half from Thompson, Brendan James and Joe Burke gave the Cougars their biggest winning margin this season, despite the Spirit pulling a goal back through Jason Loft with 15 minutes to go. A goal either side of half-time gave the Brisbane Strikers the win they needed to overtake Olympic FC on the Hyundai QSL ladder. NQ Razorbacks could have scored twice within the opening five minutes, but it was Steve Unsworth who found the back of the net first when he coolly slotted home after a pass from Luke Morley. Unsworth then turned provider, producing the perfect cross for Morley to hit first time past Razorbacks keeper Kieran Gonzalez on the hour mark. The FNQ Bulls claimed their third victory in as many games when they beat Queensland Academy of Sport 4-0 at Lions Stadium Richlands. Joe Rush opened the scoring half an hour into the game with a header from a Glen Herney corner. QAS dominated possession for large parts of the game but weren't able to convert and were punished when the Bulls scored three goals in four minutes towards the end of the second half. Stephen Cater netted a brace, bringing his tally this season to an impressive